Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to In the Middle Sunday School class. We've got some things we want to cover this morning, and I want to go through those. Um, but before we get started, I want to go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I thank you, God, for this word today. God, I pray, God, that those that are taking their time out of their day to listen, Father God, I pray, God, that they come with an eager heart, God, ready to hear your word, Father God, and have a willing spirit to respond to whatever you reveal to them, Lord God. And Lord, I pray if there's anyone lost this morning, Father God, that you will send your spirit out, Father God, and touch that one. Lord God, that they will come to you, God, before it's too late, Lord God. And Lord, give us courage and the words to speak your word going forth from this day forward, God, to prepare for your coming. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, many pastors and pulpits all across the world today are heralding out and um, the cry for preparation for Christ's return. You know, many sermons have been preached recently in our church from our pastor of making sure we're prepared, making sure we recognize and understand that there is coming a day of reckoning where we're going to stand before the Lord, either at the great white throne judgment or at the judgment seat of Christ. And, you know, depending on where, where you are in the Lord and your relationship with him will determine which seat you stand before. But this morning, I want to talk to you about the fact that you know, with all these things that we see playing out in before our eyes, that we see coming alive off the pages, that the thankfully the hour-long feel-good messages are kind of going to the wayside now. I believe the church as a whole, for the most part, has begun to awaken to what time it is. And yes, there are sermons and there'll be teachings a plenty as usual, as per normal in the word of God where you're going to have encouragement you're going to have the cause to endure to to stand and steadfast in the word and the promises of God to to endure through the trials of our life but there are also the important cries of those that are saying beware beware be ready be ready you know you've got to beware of the coming judgment if you are lost but if you're a christian hallelujah we are waiting for the trumpet to sound whether it's a personal trumpet or christ trumpet to rapture us out of here amen we have so much to look forward to if you're a child of god but we have so much to dread if we are not and in this word you know the word likens it to a double-edged sword it cuts going in and cuts going out well when it cuts going in sometimes you know it hurts you know you have a good sermon being preached to you or a good teaching being preached to you you'll feel that conviction you'll feel that correction when it cuts going in but when it comes coming it, it cuts coming out honey it's healing it is mending it is comforting it is sealing that place where there was a fault but now there's a healing and there's a correction there's a, a right relationship with the Lord so it's got that double blessing if you will because God uh, disciplines those he's lo he loves amen however loving and faithful and gracious and merciful our God is he is also a jealous all powerful almighty God he has the innate ability believe it or not to see the motives of our hearts amen he sees our sins that are not under the blood and when he is the judge jury and executioner we have a mighty all-powerful god to fear and if we are truly saved, thank God we've been judged already through what Christ did. Jesus has paid our sin debt. He took our place. And we get to walk in that daily as we continue in the faith. We get to walk in those promises that Jesus purchased for us. But if we are not saved, if you are not saved today out there listening to me today and you've not made a decision to follow Christ and repent of your sins, honey, you are condemned already. That's what the Word of God says. 
Let's go to John chapter 3, verse 18 today. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified. That seems to be my favorite translation as of late. But let's go to John 3, 18. He who believes in him, trusts and rely and clings on him, is not judged. For in him there is no rejection or condemnation. But he who does not believe is judged already. He or she has already been convicted and received his or her sentence because he or she has not believed in and trusted in the name of the only begotten Son of God because they are condemned for refusing to let his or her trust rest in Christ's name. So there is a day of judgment coming to those that refuse to repent and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And it's coming sooner than later. Amen. Again, I've said it over the weeks past. I'm sure other teachers, I know preachers have. We can see the signs. If you have any knowledge of the Word of God at all, in the end times, you see the day drawing near. And it is terrifying to think that there are going to be people left down here that refuse to accept Christ as Savior. And they're going to have to go through what is like an enormous, live, real nightmare. There is no horror movie. There is no action movie. There is no sci-fi movie or anything of the sort ever been made. And mankind is never with its incredible imagination has never been able to dream up the days that are coming and the horror of it you know when i was a little girl i loved to sit and draw and and i would write some things or i'd let my mind wander to things and you know of course i'd watch scary movies like the wizard of oz that was like the scariest movie i ever watched growing up when i was little um, but you would get terrified and sometimes it was exciting to get scared or terrified or whatever when you're trick-or-treating or somebody jumps out and, sc and scares you says boo you know um, and then there's people that can write incredible stories you might have read books when you were growing up that seemed to um, instill fear or their horrors or nightmares and things and you know it was easy as a child or even as an adult when you read these these fiction novels and these things that you know oh well it's just fiction it's, there's no truth to it it's just something I enjoy to read or I, I like getting the goosebumps the scary kind and you know no big deal but as a child also I grew up in a Christian home where Revelation was read to me, where Matthew and Luke and some other areas, some Old, Old Testament prophets, I was read those things growing up. I very rarely, honestly, read it myself until I was in my teens. But I remember hearing it on occasion um, in different churches that I went two different revivals that were, were preached where some of these end time examples were given what was going to transpire and I remember being scared I remember being fearful I didn't have an understanding of why I was fearful you know I in a way I likened it into a fable or another Brothers Grimm story like Billy Goat Scruff you know um, but we know <laughs> we know the word is true and it's being played out before our eyes and if it is now and the word of god being true god said it which means it's going to play out to the nth degree until the end amen there's nothing that is not in here there's nothing in here i meant to say that is not going to take place Every bit of it is going to take place sooner than later. Let's go to Zephaniah 1, 2, and 3. Now, that's in the Old Testament. Zephaniah 1, 2, and 3. By taking away, and this is God speaking through Zephaniah. By taking away, I will make an end, and I will utterly consume and sweep away all things from the face of the earth, saith the Lord. I will consume and sweep away man and beast, Sweep away and consume the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. 
I will overthrow the stumbling blocks and idols with the wicked worshipers. And I will cut off mankind from the face of the earth, says the Lord. There is a final solution to evil and to sin on this planet. And it's the judgment of God. Just like he said in these verses right here. We have all of these things that are going to transpire. And I pray each one of us watching today and myself included, won't be here to see it. But sad to say, there are going to be those that will be here to see that. Zephaniah 1, 14 through 18 says, The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. Hark! The voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man unable to fight or to flee, will cry then bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the blast of trumpet and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the high towers and battlements. And I will bring distress upon men so that they shall walk like blind men because they've sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's indignation and wrath. But the whole earth shall be consumed in the fire of his jealous wrath. For a full, yes, a sudden end will he make of all the inhabitants of the earth. Pay attention. As you're listening to the scriptures this morning, what is your flesh's response to these scriptures? Are you wanting to turn the video off right now? Are you drinking your coffee, checking your phone at the same time when it got a little doom and gloomy? What's your spirit's response? Is your spirit sitting on edge? Are you being truthful? Our flesh does not want to hear it. Amen. We don't want to hear about the doom and gloom days that are coming. But brothers and sisters, all of those things are going to happen in our lifetime. Whether we're here or in heaven, those things are going to happen in our lifetime. We have the knowledge, we have the authority, and we've been given the commission by God to declare and announce these coming. This stuff is coming. We have, as the church, been silenced and silent too long. There's been many years that have gone by where we've been preaching the feel-good messages. We've been preaching about the grace and, and discipling. And all of those things have its place. It has its time. It has its season. But it's of utmost importance that we sound the alarm to the lost that there is a day coming. There is a day coming to those that are backslidden. There is a day coming to those that are lukewarm and unconcerned we have the in our own in our we have in our hands the ability and the authority by God to take his gospel into all the world preach it and make it make disciples of all men amen baptize them but the judgment has to begin in the house of God and it's our great honor and our duty to unveil the judge of the earth before the world because as we know in our nation justice is supposed to be blind right so that it's fair so that it's not sold in any way or made vulnerable in any way it should be truthful and just well honey God is the greatest judge there is all of his judgments are righteous all of them are holy he can cut through all the trash and get to the truth because nothing is hidden he doesn't have to look hard he don't have to go unbury it he don't have to send anything off to the lab and determine and do any test he knows there is a day coming. There is a day coming. And you and I have this awesome opportunity to announce him to.
to the world in this world full of injustice and it's only going to get worse it's only going to get worse and time is running out we've got to be about it and when these messages come forth where the lord is trying to remind us to be prepared to be ready to be to be looking for his coming but also be warning being that herald being that watchman on the wall it's just like when your parents are, you know, you're growing up and your parents are sitting you down at the supper table and mom's cooked a meat and two vegetables and two of them vegetables are green and you don't like them. Your mom and your dad knows you need those vegetables to grow you up healthy. So that prayerfully, if you live that kind of lifestyle where you're eating healthy meals, maybe that will stem off it and keep at bay any bad health and maybe you prolong your life as you get older god will give you what you need it's not always what you want amen because if you just like a child if you fed your kid candy and cookies and snacks all the time they're going to end up being a sickly child their growth will be stunted they'll have problems in all kinds of areas of their life and ultimately if those problems are left unhindered and they linger ultimately can kill your child the word is the same way god does love us god does want us to encourage one another god does want us to disciple one another and hold one another up another up but he also is a just god we also have to give the hard stuff too we also have to say brothers and sisters wake up get out of complacency stir yourself up pray more read more do whatever it takes in order to get you grown up in the spirit amen because the world is getting darker it's going to get harder and it's going to take some strong muscle bound spiritual christians amen and it's going to take faith faith your faith is grown when it's tested and you're going to go through some things but we need to be stable enough in the lord so when they come and we are having to deliver these hard words to the lost and to the backslidden that that we will be able to take the rebuff or the rejection or what persecution even and continue to stand for the lord and not be shaken in any way so this morning as i give you these scriptures as reminders to you i pray you put them in your pocket you put them in your your hard drive in your spirit amen and you study these words out yourself so that you can be prepared because there's going to be people they're going to come to us all along the way as they see it get closer and closer and closer they might be lost they might be backslidden or just a brother or sister that's kind of sitting on the fence a little bit lukewarm they're going to come and ask you some things we need to be ready we need to have a, a, a answer for the hope we have amen zephaniah chapter 2 1 through 3 collect your thoughts yes unbend yourselves in submission to see if there's any sense of shame and no consciousness of sinful sin left in you oh shameless nation not desired the time for repentance is speeding by like shafe whirled before the wind Therefore, consider before God's decree brings forth the curses upon you before the time to repent is gone, like the drift is shaped before the fierce anger of the Lord comes upon you. Yes, before the day of the Lord comes upon you. Zephaniah here is reminding us that there is a day coming. We need to search ourselves. We need to ask the Holy Spirit to search us. Let this word search us out. If there's anything in us that we need to get dealt with, why? He says here because the repentance is flying by you. There's a window of time open for you to repent. It's time to do so now because there's going to come a time just like he's saying when a wind will carry some chafe some chafe by you it don't stay it blows by there's a window of time and while that window is open and the lord's dealing with your hearts about areas of your life christian or it, as a matter of your salvation center it's time to deal with it right now while the lord is present and while he's near and while he is convicting your heart it's time to deal with it right now because there's going to come a time when that won't be there the Lord is calling all of his sheep 
out of the pack of wolves, symbolically, really. We can't play both sides. We have to pick a side and stick. That's what I tell my Sunday school class once in a while. We cannot just serve God on the weekends or when we have a problem or when we've got an emergency or somebody that we love is sick or in need. We must surrender our flesh to that cross every day by taking it up and following Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why when the Lord opens the window, Receive that forgiveness, receive that rebuke, receive that encouragement, whatever you need, and let's move on in the Lord. Amen. 1 Kings 18.21 says, Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long will you halt and limp between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if it's Baal, then follow him. And the people did not answer him a word. Think about that. Even Elijah back in that day was telling the people, look, you can't play both sides. You can't be lovey-dovey with the God over here today called Baal and then over here with God Jehovah at another day. You've got to pick one. You can't be playing both sides and expect to make heaven your home. We can't do that today. But over time in the church, universal, really in America more than any place that I know of, it's the only place I live, it seems to me that we have put so much grace out there and applied it with a big spackle, spatula, that everybody thinks, well, I can do whatever I want to and I'm going to make heaven my home. But that's not the case. We cannot continue in sin and expect to make heaven our home. No, ma'am, we can't. So we've got to stick to the way of truth. We've got to stick to the Lord. Amen. We've got to make a, de a definitive decision to stay faithful to the Lord. Because just like that pack of wolves I was talking about a moment ago, when you're trying to play both sides, you're trying to live with the world and you're trying to live with God, don't you know that wolves eat sheep? We see that now in the political realm. We see that now in the media. Oh, you know, Ellen DeGeneres was somebody's, you know, she is the epitome of the New Age movement where everything's acceptable and so forth. And she was a, a, a big mouthpiece for her movement and different things. Having a motto about being kind to people. Now it's come out that she and some others in her organization have been hateful and mean and so forth. They're turning on their own. And that's the way Satan does. You are never his friend, brothers and sisters. His agenda will always be the same, no matter how, how high you are in his hierarchy or not. He is always going to still kill and destroy. He is never your friend. And what looks like it's enjoyable for a season is just that. It is just for a season because when sin brings forth, honey, it brings death. Amen. It's going to bring death one way or the other. So as sheep of the Lord, we cannot live in a con continuous, constant state of sinfulness. We must decide. Eventually, there's coming a payday, and we have to decide right now if we're going to be on the side of the enemies or if we're going to come out from among the world and not be condemned. Amen. Let's go to Isaiah 66, 1 through 5. Isaiah 66, 1 through 5. Now, this is beautiful to me, the first few verses especially. Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne. Now, you think about the way God is expressing him, his self. Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house would you build for me? And what kind can be my resting place? For all these things my hand has made. And so all these things have come into being by and for me, says the Lord. But this is the man to whom I will look and have regard. Pay attention, y'all. This is the man to whom I will look and have regard. He who is humble and of a broken or wounded spirit, and who trembles at my word and reveres my commands. 
Think about the God that we serve this morning for just a moment. He sits high and looks down low. I have heard that my whole life. But think about the, the picture he painted for us. He said, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. My gosh, that's the God that we serve. And as big and mighty and powerful as he is, he says in that same verse, he says, but I will look to this man or woman and my favor will be upon this type of man or woman. He says, those that are humble and that have a broken or wounded spirit. In other words, it's saying it's humble. He knows, she knows that they are nothing without me. That there's not any pride. There's no lofty, haughty spirit within them. They know I am their source. They know that I am the only answer there is. They know that everything I am is all they'll ever need. Amen. And they just willfully, joyfully, and in love obey and honor my commands. And then verse 3 says, But the acts of the hypocrites' worship are as abominable to God as if they were offered to idols. He who kills an ox will be guilty as if he slew and sacrificed a man. If he broke a dog's neck and sacrificed him, he who offers a cereal offering as if he offered swine's blood, and he who burns incense to God as if he pleased an idol, such people have chosen their own ways, and they delight in and their abominations think about that these are the religious people now now he just told us what he looks upon and he favors right but then he says but look at how the hypocrites offer their worship he says they think they're doing me something good they think they're doing something incredible like i'm receiving it like oh i love the smell he says but everything they're offering because he sees our motives everything they're offering is an abomination to me and they think they're doing something wonderful and that it's going to be accepted mm -hmm. He says, such people have chosen their own ways and they delight in their abom abominations. He says, so I, this is God, I will also choose their delusions and their mockings, their calamities and afflictions, and I will bring their fears upon them because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not listen or obey, but they did what was evil in my sight and chose that in which I I did not delight. Think about that. Again, he's saying these people believe they're doing me a service. They think they're doing something beautiful and wonderful. He says, but they're doing their own thing. They are saying that they they have it all cornered. They have it all figured out. I don't have any say in it. They're doing me this huge favor. And they're doing what I want them to do. He's saying, but when I called and I convicted them, they did not listen. How many times has God convicted us and we pushed it off for a while? How many times has he convicted us this week and we had to repent? Amen. We know where we stand in the Lord on a daily basis. So many times when, when we're convicted and what our response is. Just like I asked you a while ago, when you hear all these scriptures about the doom and gloom coming upon the lost world... Our, our skin wants to crawl. Our stomach gets upset. We don't want to hear it. We, our flesh don't. We want to push it away. But there is a judge that sees everything. And he is letting us know, I see the intent of your heart. I see why you're doing what you're doing. Don't say you're doing me a favor when you're doing yourself evil. Amen. He says, so hear the word of the Lord. Verse 5, you who tremble by his word, your brethren who hate you, who cast you out, you, you, that they for my name's sake have said, let the Lord be glorified that we may see your joy. But is they who will be put to shame. He's saying they think when the day of judgment comes, they think they have really done something fine and wonderful. But they're going to have a rude awakening when they stand before me and I say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. We have to weigh our motives 
against the word of God. If there's anything within us that exalts us, our platform, our ministry, our own pride, our name, our image, we're wrong. We're wrong and we've got to stop it. Amen. We are to be men and women sold out to the Lord. Again, that should be humble and listen for his voice. If you look at verses 15 and 16 in that same chapter, Isaiah 66, it says, For behold, the Lord will come in fire, and his chariots will be like the stormy wind, to render his anger with fierceness and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword would the Lord execute judgment upon all flesh, and the slain of the Lord will be many. There's going to be many, brothers and sisters. I hate to say it. I ain't even thinking about it. That it is coming. There are going to be left here on this planet that will not have served, will not have gone in the rapture, will not have repented of their sins, even after the rapture take a place, and they know that they know that they know they've missed the rapture. They might have opportunities, and they will not turn to the Lord. The Lord is going to send them a delusion. It is just going to be so sad. And it's going to be people we probably knew in this life. It is so important that we stand as watchmen on the wall, calling, calling, sounding out the alarm, saying, Come to the Lord, come to the Lord before it's too late. Repent, repent. And then look to our left and look to our right or even look in the mirror and say, Brother or sister, wake up. Let's get rid of that sin that so easily besets you. Let's get you back on the path going straight for the Lord with a laser sight on Him. And keep undistracted. Keep your focus on Him. And let's be about His business, whatever that call is. But we're all given the same mission. To preach the gospel. To let people know there's a hell to pay for the sins unrepentant. Amen. And what stands between the lost and an eternal hell is just the one decision. One decision where they will um, receive Christ. What if that decision was waiting on us? How are they going to see Jesus if we are not the light, if we are not his hands and feet, if we are not his mouthpiece saying, hey, Jesus loves you. God's made a way. You don't have to go to hell. What if we are Jesus like to them? How about us giving grace? How about us giving forgiveness? How about giving favor? How about serving? How about loving? How about for me, forgiving. How about forgiving? Anybody ever had to work really super hard on forgiving? I have. I have. And I have to consciously stay aware of that. I have to consciously stay aware of pride in my life. There's things in my character. There's things in my past that were done to me. And things that I've done that I have to consciously ask the Lord, search me, God. Because I know, and He knows me better than I do, but I know sometimes when the Lord speaks to me something where I feel that conviction in my heart, deal with it right then. Right then. Don't let the day go and, and not deal with it. Amen? So when we are out engaging the world and we're loving on them and we are working for the Lord and we're trying to win the lost, it's so important that we be right. Because you can't pour out what you don't have within you. Amen. When did the church lose sight of eternity? That's a question that begs asking. When did we lose sight of eternity? When did we decide, well, I've got mine. You go ahead and get yours if you can. God help us, Lord. God forgive us of having hard hearts. Amen. You know, we, we get so comfortable in our houses with our Christian family sitting around us or you know our friends or our church and we're like well, we're saved we're all on our way to glory and you know and we get so comfortable linking arms and saying kumbaya come by this way Lord 
But what about those outside the walls? What about at those outside in our communities? What about those that are down the road that we needed to speak to and we chose not to or we're going to need to speak to? We need to pray to God to give us courage and we take it up and do the thing. Amen. The days are quickly coming, like I said before, and we're going to see all these things unfold before us. I want us to go back to Isaiah chapter 55 right quick. I'm not going to take too much of your time this morning. Chapter 55, verse 6 through 11. Seek, inquire for, and require the Lord while he may be found, claiming him by necessity and by right. Call upon him while he is near. And let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have love, pity, and mercy for him, and to our God, for he will multiply to him his abundant pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts." For as the rain and snow come down from the heavens and return not there again, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth and sprout, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void without producing any effect useless." But it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. There's some promises in those scriptures right there. I dare you to highlight that. That's incredible. Because God's again reminding us, seek me now. Come sit at my feet now. While you can, while I'm near, let all you wicked folks forsake your way right now. Obtain my righteousness. Come to salvation through Jesus Christ. He said, and when you forsake your ways and you repent and you turn back to me, in verse 7, he says, you're going to have love. You're going to have pity. You're going to have mercy from me. He says, and I will multiply you over and over and over. Abundant pardon. What kind of deal is that, man? We didn't deserve any of it. We don't deserve any of it, but for Jesus Christ. Amen. He says, you might not understand why I saved so-and-so down the road. They were so evil. They were so bad. They were the scum of the earth to you. They hurt you so bad when you were a child. But my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. We think it's so unfair sometimes when people get forgiveness from the Lord and we're like, <clears throat> so we're like Jonah. You know, we're reluctant prophets. But let me tell you guys, it's time for our heart to get broke again for the lost. Amen. It's time for us to get past ourselves. Ask God to fix us, us lay on his altar and say, God, I'm not moving until you do surgery on me, Father God spiritual surgery on me God remove every hindrance show me shine a light on every area God where there's unforgiveness bitterness anger lust greed lie stealing cheating whatever it is God I want to be under your holy light and I don't want to leave from here until it's all put under the blood because time is running out and I need to be Holy on the battlefield, all of me on the battlefield, so that I can go forth in your name. That's what we need to be doing right there. That's what we need to be doing. Why? Because God's asking us to come up higher. Amen. He's asking us to come up higher in Him. Grow up. I want you to grow up. I want to give you gifts. I want to give you fruit. I want all these things to be evident and working through you. But we've got to be in the place where he can. Amen. We have very limited time left. And it, even if we, I've got some notes here. Even if we have another two years before Christ comes back, it's still limited time. Our focus should be on the Great Commission as it should be our number one priority. 
We need to be encouraging one another to endure, to stand fast, unmovable in Christ Jesus, especially, especially, especially as we do see the day draw near. Amen. And we see the end of the church age coming quickly, very quickly. Jesus gives us the signs of the beginning of sorrows in Matthew as well as in Luke. Pastor Cowan covered some of those last week, and I'm sure there might have been some other teachers that have done the same over the last several months. But when we see all of those signs that are given to us in those scriptures about famines and pestilence and wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and all these things that are taken, we're told that's the beginning of sorrows. We're there. We're there. Let's look at Luke 21. Let's look at Luke 21. Verse 28 through 36. Now, when these things begin to occur, and they are, look up, look up, lift up your heads, because your redemption draweth nigh. Amen. Y'all know that song. Lift up your heads, redemption draws nigh. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they put forth their buds and come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and you perceive and you know that summer is already near. Even so, when you see these things take place, understand and know that the kingdom of God is at hand. Truly, I tell you, this generation that's living at that definite period of time will not perish and pass away until all has taken place. The sky and the earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But take heed yourselves and be on your guard. That's a warning to us this morning. Take heed yourselves, Vanessa, and be on guard, lest your hearts be overburdened and depressed and weighed down with the giddiness and headache and nausea of self-indulgence, drunkenness, and worldly worries and cares pertaining to the business of this life. And lest that day come upon you suddenly like a trap or a noose. For it will come upon all who live upon the face of the entire earth. So keep watch then and watch at all times being discreet, attentive, and ready praying that you may have the full strength and ability and be accounted worthy to escape all these things taken together that will take place and to stand in the presence of the Son of Man. My gosh, there's warnings in those scriptures. He's telling us now, right now, we see the day dawn and we see those trees bud. We see these signs. We hear it. We're seeing it on the news. We're hearing it in our neighborhoods. We're seeing it in our own lives. But these warnings here is because he loves us. He says, but take heed to yourselves and be on guard so that you don't get oppressed, that you don't get overburdened, and that you don't get weighed down with all what looks like a good time he says, because why? He says, because if you get carried away in this life, if you are so anchored deep in this earth that you're not going to be able to let it go, when I send my son to come get you, you're going to be caught unaware and not be ready. Lift up your head, brothers and sisters. Our redemption is drawing nigh, but we must be out there warning the others that are lost to come into Jesus, to come into the fold, because it is our priority. It should be our priority to win the lost at any cost. Amen. I love you this morning. This has been a little bit different. But I pray you've received something that you again can put in your pocket. And use for the days coming. I pray you're studying the word on how to answer the lost. How to answer the lukewarm. How to answer the one in the mirror. Amen. We need to be ready. We need to be looking for our Father and thanking Him for the blessed hope and looking up 
being watchful, waiting on our scooting out of here. Amen. I love you. Have a wonderful day. And God, I pray, God, your word found fertile soil today, Father God, and that you'll reap the harvest in due season. Amen. God bless y'all. See you next week.